<clears throat> what what makes up a class. And this video is mostly just for that introduction. You're maybe confused at what is a class, so I want to go through all the pieces again. Um, I'm going to start by creating a project. And anytime we want to create a Java file, and of course we make a project for that. So I'm going to redo this 2x2 two two matrix demo. And inside of this, I'm going to create a class. So I just say new class. And I can give it a name here. So I'm going to call mine 2x2 two two matrix. And hit finish. All right. Now, uh, here we have, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Here we have our class declaration body. Every class in Java starts with the keyword public class and then the class name. And the class name has to match the file name. All right, so we have a two by two matrix and, and it's in a file called two by two matrix.java. All right, and this is this constitutes a class, and as soon as we have this, we can instantiate that object. Right. Everything I put inside of here is is within the class body, and generally the first thing that we put inside of our class body is our fields, or um, our you could see some some people call them instance variables, uh, but they're the things that make up our class. So in this case, we have four of them. If we want to represent a two by two matrix, we have top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. <clears throat> we declare fields in Java as private. That's typically the, the, the convention for that. Uh, now, next what, what can happen in a, in a class is the constructors. So the constructors are used to create objects. And if we want to in initialize a constructor that, or if we want to initialize an object, we're calling that object a constructor. By default, all objects in Java have a no parameter constructor uh, until you create a constructor. So let's create one constructor to build a matrix that takes all four values. Um, so we can say public, and then it's followed by two by two matrix. That's always the convention, public two by two matrix for the constructor. And then the parameters that are gonna make up that two by two matrix. So in this case, uh, double. And we're, we're just gonna repeat the field names here because we wanna pass in all four field names. So we have top right, top left, bottom left, and bottom right. With these parameter signatures, you do have to pass in the data type for them. So there we have it. Now, what we put inside the constructor is we in initialize the fields. So those fields we had at the top, we're gonna initialize to the values of the parameters. And we have to specify that we wanna access the fields of the class by using the keyword this. So we say this dot top left equals top left. And, and this uh, is repeated for all four fields. So this dot top right, equals top right. This dot bottom left equals bottom left. And this dot bottom right equals, oops, sorry about that. Uh, bottom right. And I'm on a Mac, and so the command for uh, getting the autofill is control and enter to autofill your code. All right. So you can have as many constructors as you'd like. Uh, I'm just going to put one constructor in this case. So we can build one matrix, and that matrix can have uh, the same value for all four of its, of its values. Um, if you wanted to, we could make another constructor, but at this point, um, that default no parameter constructor does not exist, or it's overridden, and um, we cannot use it anymore. So that object's no parameter con constructor is no longer in use. Right. 
Uh, the third part of this is our methods. So methods um, can include getters and setters, which are a uh, access and modifier type methods, or they can include other types of methods, um, such as matrix operations, things we would like to do with this. Uh, furthermore, we could override the two strings and the equals method as well. Now I want to show you guys getters and setters, and some people like to put the getters and setters underneath the fields because they're related to them. So let's talk about what a getter is. A getter is uh, uh, a method that returns a field. And a setter is a method that sets a field. So we have a method that gets a field and a method that sets a field. And you can choose whether or not to put getters and setters in your code, depending on whether or not you want your uh, user of your code to be able to access the fields. So uh, in this case, uh, with the 2x2 two two matrix, we may not want them to be able to set a specific value of the matrix without uh, first you know, doing some matrix operation on this. Since typically, when you have a matrix, you can't just change one value of that matrix. But in different uses, maybe you would want uh, to be able to do that. So it, it, it is up to the user for, the, for them. But just the syntax for a getter and a setter, I'm just going to do one for the top left. So we would say public, and then for a getter, we want to return a field. So we have to put the type of the field, and then the convention is get, and then the field name, top left. Just like that. And all that goes inside of a getter is returning the field. And I could say this.top left as well, instead of just top left. All right, and that is my getter, and I could create one for each of the fields, and and then for our setters, uh, it's a it's a similar idea, but these are void. We're not we're not uh, getting anything. We're not returning anything. We're setting the values, and so in this case, our double is passed as a parameter, and this is our new top left value, which again we can we can just pass in as new top left or, or top left or something like that, and then here we would, like our, our our constructor did, we would initialize that field, like so. Okay. And we could actually use Eclipse to automatically um, create getters and setters for these. So there's an auto auto field here, and, and I'm going to click this just to show you what it does. Um, and it gives you an option of what it what do you want for your uh, method names, and you can see it creates that naming convention that we're using here. Uh, and then we can hit OK. You can select where you want them to generate them. They generated them at the bottom of the field, and you can see here. We get top right and set top right, and you can see that they're the same as the ones we, we created. So you can have uh, Eclipse auto generate, and most IDEs will have an auto generation of getters and setters, as actually as well as constructors. Uh, you can see what else it did is it switched uh, this instead of accessing it with a private field, it accessed it with the setter. And um, this is fine. You don't necessarily need to do that. So. Um, I'm gonna fix this here. So now it's uh, top right. It's trying to use that that uh, get setter in order to set the field within the constructor, which is perfectly fine to do. Um, that is a that's a preference thing. I, I don't I don't think that's a convention thing. I think that's more of a preference thing. So I, I typically will set the fields uh, and just access them. Private means you can access them within the class. So. Uh, again, getters and setters are optional. You may want them, and sometimes you might not want them other times. So we're just going to leave it at that for now. So what are some other methods we can do? Well, uh, let's say, for example, we wanted to get the determinant of a matrix. The determinant of a matrix is a mathematical expression uh, where you have you, you take your diagonals, you multiply them by one another, and then you, you, know, you take the difference of them. And this determinant is useful in different operations, including the inverse of the matrix. Um, without getting into too much of the math, uh, if you think of the matrix as A, B uh, in the top row and C, D in the bottom row, then the determinant is A times D minus B times C. So this is going to return a decimal number since our top left, bottom right, uh, and top right and bottom left are decimals. Then we want to return a type decimal so we don't lose any precision when we calculate this. We'll call this get determinant as a function, and as, as you write sorry, as a method, as you write methods, uh, the thing that goes here is the return type, and you might see other return types such as void. And then what, what comes next is the method name, 
Um, if you're going to make a method static, then you would add it uh, here. But this method's not going to be static. This method is just going to be a double. All right. And so then we have this determinant function. We're going to return uh, the difference between the diagonals. So top left times bottom right, and then minus top right times bottom left. So this is this is just a calculation here, all right. And we can do a number of other methods like this. So we could have a method for multiplying one matrix by another matrix, or we could have a, uh, a method for an inverse. Um, so I'm just going to do one more simple one, which is addition. So let's say we want to add two matrices together the top left elements get added together, the top right elements get added together, the bottom left elements get added together, and so on. So this return type here would be a two by two matrix. So we don't have to always return numbers, we can return uh, the actual class that we're, um, we're in here. And we can call this addition. And in this case, we need to add a two by two matrix. So we need to pass something as a parameter as well. We need to pass another matrix to add this to. So we'll call this other. And then um, my, my return type here, since it's a two by two matrix, I need to actually create a new two by two matrix. And when I say new two by two matrix, I'm now using the constructor that I created up here. So I have to pass in arguments that match these four parameters, top left, uh, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. And the way I do this is by uh, you know just writing out the four of them. So I'm adding the two top lefts. So that's going to be this top left plus other top left. Those two in, in, in tandem make up the top left of that. Uh, the next one is this top right plus other top right. And you can see I'm getting some red underlines as I go. Just keep going. Um, it's because I don't have all four parameters filled in yet. So don't worry if you're, if you're worried about the errors yet. Don't worry about them. Uh, not until we finish the line of code, then we should worry about any syntax errors. Now I'm going to put this in the next line down, just so it all fits on my screen. But you could certainly uh, put this all on one line of code if you'd like. Uh, to me, this kind of makes sense because now it's breaking it up into like the first row and the second row. So it's a little bit easy to read, in my opinion. Uh, bottom right plus other dot bottom right. And we can see that they uh, need a semicolon at the end here. and uh, now all we need to do is add a return statement in front of this. So this is going to take the two matrices, this and other, add their top lefts together and create a third matrix with these values. Okay. We can have a number of other methods, but I'm not going to go through them in this video. Um, the, last, the last one I want to go over is uh, an equals method, because I think it's important that we talk about that a little bit. Um, and two strings. So these are both override methods. So um, in, in Java, the object class has two methods, well, it has a few methods, including hash code as well and, and notify and wait. But the ones we're going to typically override are two string equals and, and on occasion uh, hash code as well if you're going to use some sort of a hash function. But that's for a later discussion. So we do public string two string, and this actually overrides uh, the, the two string method. So we can actually put a tag here at override. Uh, and this is just going to indicate that we want to override the Java objects to string method. And what we're going to simply do is return a, a, a string representation of our matrix, which would look something like this, maybe a bracket and a space. Uh, and then we have our top left element. And then maybe we put a space and then we have our top right element. And then we have a space and our other bracket. And that's going to be like the first row of our matrix. And then we're going to put a new line character, uh, backslash n. Uh, and then we will have our bottom row. So same idea. Start with that, plus bottom left. plus space, plus bottom right, 
and then we'll put a space and another new line character. And then semicolon to end that line. So it's just a string representation. Uh, if it makes you feel better, you can do it this way. Um, so you can kind of see what it would look like. Right, but we're overriding that two string. And now when we print a two by two matrix, it'll actually give us the information of what fits inside of that matrix. Uh, and finally, our last override we're gonna look at in this video is the equals method. So the equals method uh, returns a Boolean value, a true or false value. And uh, the parameter that we're overriding, when we override a method, we have to match the parameter signature exactly. And the equals method we're overriding takes an object that's other. And so what we have to do is we have to cast this other object to a two by two matrix. So we can say two by two matrix, and we can just call this something like X, some temporary variable, or you know other matrix or something like that uh, equals. And then what we do is we put two by two matrix, the class we want to cast it to inside of parentheses. You can do this with any class in, or any really any data type in Java. You can cast with uh, parentheses like that. And that's telling uh, Java that we want you to treat other as if it were a two by two matrix and not uh, an object. And so now when we access the other field, the other matrix field, we can now say, have access to these four. Um, because we've declared it as a two by two matrix. Now, what can happen is if we try to compare, let's say we try to compare a matrix to a number, this doesn't really make sense. How do you compare a matrix to a number? You can't say one is whether they're equal or not. They're always, they're never going to be equal. So um, we, we want to make sure that the, the matrix is a, of a certain type uh, in, in, our, uh, in our code. And so we're just going to put a simple check for this. Okay, so if um, our object other is instance of, type of I think is C sharp getting the languages a little bit confused. So if other is an instance of a two by two matrix, that's what we want to, that's what we want to make sure is true. Then we can do all this stuff. Um, another option here is to, instead of saying if other is an instance of, we could say if it's not an instance of, so we can say if not, uh, other instance of, we'd have to add another set of parentheses here. And, and then in that case, we would want to return false. They're not of the same instances. And then we could bring this piece of code down, get rid of these brackets. Um, we also probably want to check to see if, uh, the object is null. So if, uh, other is null, then we would want to return false as well. So we don't want to compare equals to, uh, compare an object to null. So now we can safely do this cast since we know that it's the correct type. And then we can just simply, uh, see if the values are equal. So what we're going to be returning is whether each of the fields are equal to each other. So this, uh, top left is equal to other matrix dot top left. Uh, and so we're going to combine this. We want to see that all four fields are, are the same. So top right equals other matrix dot top right and bottom left equals other matrix dot bottom right or bottom left. And so we're just comparing all four values. Bottom right equals other matrix dot bottom right. Now, if all four of those are true, then it's going to return true. If any of those is false, it's going to return false. And there we have our equals method. All right, so that's the basics of a class. Those are all the different components that you have that make up anything. And classes can get infinitely more complicated. But generally speaking, you want to try to keep the behaviors of a class uh, and the data of a class to like some single responsibility. So in this case, the responsibility of a two by two matrix is to uh, just uh, deal with two by two matrix functionality. Right. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I'll see you later.